raise your hand if you're obsessed with selling sunset. Me, I'm obsessed with it. Hey y'all, I'm Cara Perez, founder of Bravely Go, and I'm a huge Selling Sunset fan. I have seen every single episode of the show, yes, including the newest season, twice. And I know you're probably asking yourself, wow, really, is that what you're doing with your one wild and precious life? And the answer is, yeah, I freaking love television. Let me know in the comments who your favorite cast member is, because I know if you watch the show, you've got opinions. But for those of you who don't watch, Selling Sunset is a show about a bunch of very beautiful, glamorous women in LA selling luxury real estate. Um, it centers on this real estate brokerage, The O Group, founded by two brothers, Jason and Brett Oppenheim. The women of Selling Sunset have become pop culture mainstays, and the show itself has been a huge success. Season five has recently come out, and so the ladies are back in the spotlight in a very big way. So today, I wanna to talk about how these women make their money, because not all of them come from wealthy backgrounds. In fact, quite a few of them have very middle class or even lower middle class backgrounds, and now they're all raking in the cash. So let's meet the ladies of Selling Sunset and talk about how they earn all their money. Here's the cast. We've got Chriselle Staus, Mary Fitzgerald, Heather Ray El Musa, Amanda Smith, Maya Vander, Davina Portraz, Christine Quinn, and Emma Hernan. They're all real estate agents with the O Group, and season five also brings us a new cast member, Chelsea Lazcani. Also, sorry if I sound a little nasally, the allergies here in Austin are so bad this week. I have just been sneezing nonstop, and like my ears are itchy. You know when you get itchy inside your head? Ugh, terrible. How do these ladies make money? We obviously know they're real estate agents, but they're so much more than that. Many of them are businesswomen, and I think it's fascinating this pipeline from reality television show to influencer and kind of pop culture figure. So I wanted to explore all of the revenue streams that these women have. I'm not going to include net worth estimates because those celebrity net worth estimate websites are notoriously terrible. They don't have any reliable information. They don't cite their sources. And if I can't cite my source, I won't put it in one of my videos, okay? The English major in me is too strong. Let's get into the women one by one and we'll start with the show's villain, Christine Quinn. Christine is known for two major things, um, her outrageous fashion sense and her even more outrageous lies. She talks openly and frequently about money, about how much she loves it, about how she likes working for it, and I appreciate that, quite frankly. She's always covered head to toe in labels, and she says things with a straight face like, my husband and I wanna buy a new house. It doesn't have to be huge, just like 10,000 square feet, which is huge, is objectively huge. Christine's husband, Christian, is the former CEO of Foodler, which was a company sold to Grubhub in 2017. We don't know exactly how much Grubhub paid for Foodler, but it's reported that Christian is worth $20 million himself. It's not clear to me if they have legally joint finances, but from the show, it does seem like Christine and Christian are on the same page financially, and they definitely spend money frequently. Christine has been a real estate agent since 2016, and since joining the show, she's added a bunch of other income streams to her resume, which is good because the girl has got expensive taste. Here's how Christine makes her money. She has a shoe dazzle shoe collection. She's a Samsung partner, a Nutrafol partner. She has a makeup collection with Ciate London. She is an author with her book, How to Be a Boss Bitch, coming in May 2022, and she sells items from her own closet. She also gets paid as a cast member of Selling Sunset and has general affiliate deals as an influencer. Christine is reported to have made about $1 million in house sales commissions in 2021. Okay, let's move on to Chriselle Staus. Chriselle is probably the show's main protagonist. She was the new girl in season one and she quickly became a fan favorite. We've watched her go through heartbreak and divorce and we've watched her be bullied by Christine. Chriselle has been very open about the fact that she grew up quite poor, experiencing bouts of homelessness as a child, sleeping in a car with her sister and her mother and she speaks very eloquently about what that meant to her then and what that means to her now. Financially, I think Chriselle is the person who has come the longest way. In season four, we watched Chriselle purchase her first ever home around age 40, 
39, I'm not totally sure how old she was, um, but as a millennial trying to buy a house right now, I'm like, hashtag relatable, Chriselle, thank you. <laughs> thank you for buying your first home at 39. Um, she bought the house for 3.3 million, and she is reported to have made about $1 million in house sales commissions in 2021. Here is how Chriselle makes her money. She published a book, under construction, living my best life took a little work. She has worked previously as an actress on All My Children and Days of Our Lives, as well as Dancing with the Stars. She is the host of a Netflix show, Reality Games. She works as an influencer and has had partnerships with Adobe Creative Cloud and DSW. She is receiving alimony payments from her ex-husband, Justin Hartley, for two and a half years since the divorce. She makes money from her house sales. She has a salary from Selling Sunset, and she does affiliate influencer marketing. Next up, we have Mary Fitzgerald, who is my personal favorite in the cast. I love Mary. I just think she's very endearing. I like that she gets flustered, but that she's also so like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a part of this. You know, she doesn't seek out confrontation, but she also is growing into a person who will stand up for herself. And I'm really proud of her for that. Mary is also another story of financial triumph. She had her first and so far only child at age 16 and was a single mother for quite some time. She's often referred to by the others as the twins favorite and she does get listings given to her, but it's also widely acknowledged that Mary is the hardest worker being in the office the most often and really just kind of on her hustle game. She's estimated to have made 1.8 million dollars in house sale commissions in 2021. She married Romain Bonnet, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, I'm not great with the French, uh, in season two, and it seems like they don't share finances, but that they are working towards a way of sharing finances. They've mentioned on the show wanting to start a house flipping business together, um, but they've also mentioned paying for things separately, so I'm not totally sure where their couple's finances lay. Romain now also works for an Oppenheim group company called White Gloves Estate, and he is the project manager for them. Here's how Mary makes her money. She has influencer collabs with companies like Hammett, Iconic London, Billy Razors, and PCA Skincare. She has commissions from real estate, she has a selling sunset salary, and she does affiliate marketing. Next up, Heather Ray El Musa. Heather is also a very big hustler. I didn't really like Heather in season one, I'll be honest, but she's grown on me and now I really respect her. She's also one of the biggest like digital hustlers. I mean, the woman has monetized every single aspect of her life, most especially including her relationship with Tarek El Musa, who is the former host of Flip or Flop um, and now the current host of another HGTV show, something like Flipping 101 maybe? I'm not sure, I didn't look that up. Tarek is also a real estate investor himself. He owns at least three homes in California. It's not clear to me if Heather now has like joint ownership of those homes. I would bet not Tarek. Uh, Tarek has been through a divorce previously with the other co-host of the show, Flipper Flop, and I'm willing to bet that he's now a prenup guy. But hey, I don't know. I don't mean to be spreading rumors out there. I don't know. But back to Heather, if you spend literally two seconds on her Instagram, you'll see how she has monetized different aspects of her life um, and how good she is at taking content and turning it into sales. You'll also notice that the two of them are actively trying to build a real estate empire. I think that Heather and Tarek really wanna be kind of like the king and queen of HGTV. Heather made an estimated $880,000 in 2021 from house sales commissions. Here are her other streams of income. Influencer partnerships and collabs, affiliate marketing, selling sunset salary, guest appearances on Tarek's show Flip or Flop, she also sold her wedding as a TV special as well as her wedding photos and gets commissions from selling properties. Oh, Davina, Davina, Davina. Where do I even start with Davina? I mean, I hated her for a very long time, for most of the show, honestly. And now I'm a little bit like, okay, I see you. Like, I don't love you, but like, I appreciate where you're coming from, you know? And I do appreciate that she is the only woman in the office who seems to be 
less into plastic surgery. Um, no shade to people who get plastic surgery. I just appreciate when someone in LA on TV is open about the surgeries they're not having, because I do think it's a very high pressure environment to get work done. Davina mentions several times that she has not only her real estate license, but also a broker's license. So she is eligible to go start her own real estate group. She has not done so as of yet. Davina is definitely not as popular as many of the other cast members, so it was harder to find details on her financial life, but here's how she makes her money. Influencer partnerships and collabs, such as a skinny mint tea and gummy collabs, salary from selling Sunset, commissions from selling homes, and affiliate marketing. Which brings us to Maya. Maya is often labeled the one without drama, but... Real fans, close watchers will know that Maya stirs the pot. Maya likes to drop little bobs into conversations and then back off and watch it explode and other people deal with the drama. She also has two children and it seems like she has hopes of opening her own brokerage one day. Here's how Maya makes her money. Commissions from house sales, influencer partnerships and collabs, affiliate marketing, and salary from selling Sunset. And finally, we have Amanda Smith. Amanda is, in my opinion, the hottest person on the show. I mean, she is beautiful. It is kind of mind-blowing to look at her. You're like, I didn't know a face could look that good but yours does. Amanda also has a lot going on in her personal life. In season two, we learn that her now ex-husband disappeared, like simply disappeared without telling anyone where he was going or how to get in touch with him. So she had to go through the process of getting sole custody of her children and divorcing a person who was not physically around. And it sounded quite traumatizing, honestly. We also learn that Amanza and Mary have been friends for more than 20 years, and Amanza works both as a real estate agent and as an interior designer for the O Group. I believe Amanza recently also bought her first property, much like Chriselle, um, but I'm not totally sure. I wasn't able to confirm that she bought it and is not just renting it, but if I had to, if I was a betting woman and I had to say which one, you know, rent or buy, I think she's recently bought a house. Here's how Amanza makes her money. The Social Good Foundation Partnership, interior design work, commissions from house sales, influencer partnerships and collabs, affiliate marketing, salary from selling Sunset, and potential child support from ex-husband Ralph Brown. So now we know how those ladies afford all of those fabulous outfits and all those delicious looking salads they're always eating on the show. I love the show. Like I said before, please let me know your favorite cast member in the comments. I definitely wanna talk about this with y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so nasally, I can hear myself now. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, hit subscribe, and drop all your juicy drama in the comments.